Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and here's the news that has absolutely shocked the world of crypto, and for good reason. Uh, Chang Ping Zhao, known as CZ for short, he's the founder and CEO of Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by volume. He, he has pled guilty to money laundering charges and other things. Uh, other, I'll get all the specifics as we get into the video, but there's a bunch of other stuff that was charged against both him and, uh, and Binance. And uh, he said, yep, I'm guilty of it. And he, and he has stepped down. He has stepped down as the CEO of Binance. There's a $4.3 billion penalty being paid by Binance, which is a record, by the way. Um, he personally is paying $50 million as a penalty, and he may be going to prison. Uh, it's not completely clear, and some people think that's not probable. I don't pretend to know, so I'm just going to share with you perspective from a couple attorneys within the XRP community and uh, what's being reported in the public. I don't pretend to know what's going to happen. Uh, but you know what's crazy to think? And can you imagine like telling somebody this in, like say, October of last year? It's crazy to think that you could have CZ in prison at the same time that scam bank run fraud is in prison. Think about that. Now, obviously, completely different situations because so far as I'm aware, despite uh, CZ pleading guilty, maybe it was just the easiest way out, we'll talk about it. But despite him pleading guilty, uh, I'm not aware of anyone that has actually been harmed as a, re as a result of anything that Binance has done, whereas FTX, run by SBF, that was an outright Ponzi scheme. But still, it's crazy. Can you imagine October a year ago if I told you, uh, yeah, well, uh, just wait about a year and a half and you're going to see CZ and Sam Bankman-Fried. Uh, they're just, uh, they're both going to be in prison at the same time. What? <laughs> Somehow this is real life, though. Somehow this is real life. I got perspective from attorney John Deet and attorney Fred Rispoli. Uh, there's a bunch. I'll break it all down for you here. But markets have taken an absolute beating today, although I'm going to share... Uh, <laughs> What it's done to the markets for a separate video because that's a that's a whole separate can of worms there. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear: I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything <clears throat> because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Here's the headline from CoinDesk: Binance to pay 4.3 billion dollars to settle U.S. criminal case. Chengping CZ Zhao resigns as CEO and pleads guilty in Seattle. Did you, folks, did any of you out there listening have this on your bingo card for 2023? Because I sure as hell did not. <laughs> Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, was criminally charged with breaking sanctions and money transmitting laws and agreed to pay $4.3 billion to settle the allegations in one of the largest penalties the U.S. has ever obtained from a corporate defendant. Founder CZ pleaded guilty in Seattle the charges he personally faced and agreed to pay a $50 million fine as well as step down from the CEO job. Ripper Richard Teng, a former Abu Dhabi regulator and later Binance's regional markets head, will take over as CEO. Binance was accused of failing to maintain a proper anti-money laundering program, operating an unlicensed money transmitting business, and violating sanctions law, according to a court filing unsealed on Tuesday. Now, folks, there's been a lot of talk in the world of crypto about, um, you know, the situation of Binance just kind of, from a legal perspective, just hanging over the heads of everyone. And so even though this has resulted in a rocky day, let's say, for markets, which again, I'll talk about in a separate video, uh, even though that's the case, this is perceived by many as ultimately a good thing. Because if there's something that was holding the market back, uh, this specifically, and the question mark of Binance, what is, or is it a fraud? Or, you know, could, could it be a Ponzi too? These types of questions are going to be gone. They're going to be bye-bye. And they think uh, a lot of people think that this is going to result in uh, the market springing. It's just one more reason that the market will spring forward in addition to everything else we've been talking about in recent weeks and months. Now, I'm not as sold on that concept. Uh, I just, I mean, is there really a strong case to be made? Maybe there is. Uh, that the market would be way higher in terms of performance this year if there weren't question marks surrounding the legal status of, of Binance? I'm not completely sure about that. But I, I'm open to mind. If somebody's got a compelling case, I'm willing to hear it. I just haven't seen anything to this point. But that's... That would lead me to think that that's you know, probable. But that is one of the narratives that I've seen bandied about today. So I just thought I'd mention it. 
Uh, piece continues, though. Zhao pleaded guilty to violating the Bank Secrecy Act and causing a financial institution to violate the BSA, according to another filing. His fine will be credited against the amount he owes the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the U.S. Department of Justice said. Binance employees knew and discussed that the company was serving thousands of users in sanctioned countries, and they knew that facilitating transactions between U.S. users and users in sanctioned countries would be in violation of U.S. law. But they did it anyway, Attorney General uh, America Garland said during a press conference on Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, so look, there's this question of, does CZ actually think he did something wrong, or does he not, and he doesn't want to risk like, like a ridiculously lengthy prison sentence? And, which is a legitimate question here. Now, my, my suspicion at this point, based on, because I've read, a, like, infinity articles on this stuff at this point, <laughs> and, and not enough, like, if you're in the future, maybe you know more than me if you're watching this, like, a day later, who knows. But uh, at, at this point, as far as I can tell anyway, uh, it does seem that laws were likely broken, but then it's just a question of, even so, was anybody harmed? And as far as I'm aware, the answer is no. So it's not like an FTX type of situation. But my understanding is he pled guilty because he actually is guilty. That's what I think at this point. But again, it's still kind of early on. This is the first day that this has happened. It, you know, it, it hasn't even been 12 hours since this news broke. So, you know, like things happen fast. But that's what it looks like at this particular moment anyway. And then they write, uh, the $4.3 billion Binance is paying, uh, is, uh, is among the largest penalties ever obtained from a corporate defendant, Garland said. The exchange's overall fine remains $4.3 billion dollars with some amount being credited to each agency. Separately, the U.S. Treasury Department and CFTC announced their own settlements with Binance. Uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen noted that Binance's settlement with her department's money laundering and sanctions watchdogs was the largest in Treasury history. And so since then, and this is uh, within the last couple hours this news broke, uh, CZ was released on a $175 million bond could return to Dubai. And so, folks, there, there is a chance still, and I'll get into that, just give me a few minutes to get to this, but he could legitimately end up in prison. I don't know for sure what the odds of that are, but it, it looks, as far as I can tell, to be on the table. Anyway, Peace reads as follows, though. <laughs> what a train wreck this is for. Binance founder CZ will pay $175 million release bond and agree to return to the United States 14 days before his February 23rd, 2024 sentencing, possibly allowing him to return to Dubai. In a November 21st bond document filed in a Seattle federal court, Zhao agreed to share with the court where he would reside and that a warrant could be issued for his arrest if he fails to show up for his court date. Fa check out this. This is steep, should that be the case. Check this out. Failure to appear in court carries a $250,000 fine and a maximum of 10 years in jail. The U.S. is expected to review Zhao's bail order. If a judge denies review of the order, it will become effective on November 27th at 5 p.m. Washington time. If the judge grants a review before that date, Zhao must stay in the United States until a decision is made. No extradition agreement exists between the U.S. and the United Arab Emirates. However, the two countries made a bilateral agreement to enhance law enforcement cooperation in uh, 2024. And so uh, Zhao's been basically living in Dubai for like the last several years. So he's out at this particular point. Uh, but in this in the afternoon, in the first few hours of all this breaking, I had already read a ton of articles on this stuff. And I, I was like, okay, one of the things that is not clear to this point is, will CZ end up in, in prison? And so I posted the following at 1.09 p.m. Central Time. With news that CZ is pleading guilty to money laundering charges and reportedly paying a $50 million fine, is he at risk of going to prison? If so, any idea for how long? I've read multiple articles all saying the same thing, and none are talking about this so far as I've seen. And I tagged some attorneys, including John Deaton, who did respond to me, and he simply wrote, likely two to five years probation, possibly house arrest for six months to one year. No prison, in my opinion. So that's what he, he thinks in all likelihood, CZ not going to be going to prison. Um, attorney Fred Rispoli responded to me and wrote, Agree with John. No way CZ would have agreed to this without assurances of no jail time, which is why it isn't part of the announcement. Would take the sting out of the $4 billion news and CZ admits to criminal wrongdoing if in same breath Department of Justice said such substantial criminal behavior warranted 
probation, <laughs> which is a, a, a totally fair take. Um, now, I do want to highlight this, and again, it's still early on this. It's been, again, less than 12 hours since all this started here. Uh, but there's this article from Reuters. Uh, Cheng Penzhao, the crypto king and Binance chief, ousted for U.S. crimes. And I don't want to read the article, but I do want to highlight a key part on this topic, which reads as follows. And this has to do with prison. U.S. sentencing guidelines call for prison time of 10 to 18 months for the charges he faces. Prosecutors are seeking an 18-month prison sentence, the New York Times reported. So assuming that's accurate, and prosecutors are actually seeking 18 months, uh, you know, I, I guess it, it's just... It's just up to the, the, presumably the judge, whatever the sentencing process looks like. Um, I don't pretend to be some sort of legal expert. I just, I mean, I, I play a lawyer on YouTube, but that's pretty much it. So we'll see what happens there, but pretty damn wild, right? Just again, him, to think that he and SBF could both be in prison for crypto-related crimes at the same damn time. I shouldn't even say crypto crimes, so that's actually not even fair because these are laws that aren't crypto specific that were, were broken. So like one, like FTX, obviously an outright Ponzi scheme. And then with with uh, CZ, he, when he pled guilty. He's acknowledging that he's guilty. Uh, those were not crypto specific laws. And again, I, I am not aware personally after reading a ton of articles, I'm not seeing anybody actually harmed by this. It's just he did something that he wasn't technically supposed to. And part of it was, and I'm not going to read this article, but there was a headline here from Coindesk. Binance got huge, uh, got huge, Binance got huge due to U.S. customers. That was illegal, U.S. says. And so the gist of the article was basically that in the early days of, of Bitcoin, you know, half a decade ago, roughly, uh, they got huge volume thanks to United States-based customers, which they weren't allowed to service. And then also, and ultimately, you know, they did lead that did lead to um, them um, not no longer allowing U.S. customers, and then they. Uh, had the, the, what would you call it, like the sister company or what, subsidiary, however it's technically structured, uh, Binance US. But, you know, I, when I jumped into crypto six years ago, I was on Binance. I personally was. And this was before Binance US existed. I was just hopping on to whatever it does. It's like, what is So it's a Chinese exchange? What's going on here? And I just, that's whatever, like everybody was using it, right? So that was the original one and then lost access to that, but they launched Binance US here. But apparently that was a huge part of what allowed them to grow so quickly. And a lot of it was fortuitous. Whatever they did with their business model, they, they grew faster than competitors. But apparently, if not for that, they probably wouldn't have. But that's what led to the downfall, ultimately, at least a big part of it from what I've gathered to this point anyway. Um, and then there was also this. John Deaton wrote, whatever you think of CZ, he had no real choice. Being able to keep his majority stake in Binance plead out to a money laundering charge and likely get two to five years of probation, there's not a criminal defense attorney alive going to say, nah, you should roll the dice. <laughs> and fair enough. And I assume that there's a reason that he did this. Um, I also read that CZ is not allowed to publicly say anything at odds with his admission of guilt. And he did have this uh, this post on social media platform X, which for the sake of time, I'm not going to pull it up. There's, you know, I can read you official statements from a ton of different people. Um, but he acknowledged, hey, I messed some stuff up. And so part of the deal here, and there would be apparently some pretty serious ramifications if he went back on this, part of the deal here is uh, he can't go back you know, publicly and state anything to the contrary of, you know, having to do with him actually being guilty here. So obviously he's going to abide by that. Otherwise, when sentencing comes in early next year, probably not going to go so well for him. Crazy freaking stuff. So... In the end, what's this going to have in terms of impact on the world of crypto? I mean, okay, so like I said earlier in the video, there's some people that believe in this narrative that this is something that was hanging over the heads of everybody, and now we're really going to be able to run. And I'm just sitting here thinking, crypto was already ripping to the upside. What is the most compelling case on that on that front? Because a lot, I see a lot of people talking about, I just, I'm not sold on it. If you've got a compelling case, I'm willing to listen. I think that crypto is ripping to the upside. There is a question mark, and I get it. Binance is the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by volume. So if there were something shady or bad, or it was going to fall apart, and it could crush markets, I get the argument. But, I mean, now we have this clarity, and it, all that happened is today anyway, price went to the downside. <laughs> so, And not that it would stay there forever necessarily, but I'm just saying. I'm, just, I'm not really buying the narrative at this point. I just... I, <laughs> I, I think that... This is going to be just a moment in time. It's a, it's, it's going to be a, a point of historical reference. 
and we're also going to go in with our lives. That's what I think is ultimately. So it's very interesting right now. I can't deny that. And what's happened in terms of price action? Oh, I'm going to make another video where I talk about that more in depth because I had some fun today. I'll just tell you right now. Uh, I went on a bit of a shopping spree. I spent a fair bit of my money. <laughs> so, I mean, when presented with opportunities like this, what's one to do? Twist my arm. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!